Uh, today's on location, I'm here with PJ Vick, South Central Wisconsin. We're on one of the very shallow flowage lakes that's here. Oh, you call them drainage Dra lakes. Drainage lakes, yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, essentially think of a river that gets real wide, river flows in, body of water gets real wide, mm -hmm. not deep at all, and the current flows out the other end. Yep, tend to be pretty shallow and marshy, a lot of mud, a lot of silt. What, what it does have going for it uh, from a standpoint of you know being a good fishery is the fish out here grow like yeah, crazy. They, they, they do. It, these systems are extremely fertile. There's a longer growth season because of how shallow and how warm they, they get in such a hurry. We saw uh, that today. Yeah, absolutely. Eight degrees from when we started to when we ended, and there's still four or five hours of sunlight. It's probably going to go up another degree or two yet. So today we're targeting crappies. Uh, as we mentioned, a very shallow lake. Uh, this body of water doesn't have your classic, you know, Minnesota uh, crappie habitat. It doesn't have the reeds along the shoreline and uh, doesn't have a sandy bottom where they can make their nests. Uh, these fish spawn on gravel flats with big boulders on them and they are incredibly shallow. Uh, we spent most of our day in two and a half feet of water or less. Yeah and uh, caught a ton of nice crappies today. Uh, didn't get any giants, but I'd say our average size was, you know, 11, 11 and a half, maybe almost 12 inches. So mm -hmm. just a, a lot of fish. A lot of them, yeah. Uh, what we found that really worked best for us, and we'd actually tried a number of different tactics. In the morning, we threw uh, spinners with a, uh, a small jig on it and a plastic body. Uh, you would describe it as like a beetle spin style yes. spinner, yes. right? Yep. Caught a couple fish on that. We got a lot of short hits. You could just feel mm -hmm. them just kind of pecking at it. Mm -hmm. And you'd, you'd hook up for a half second, then gone. Uh, we tried jig and minnow under a bobber. Yeah. Um, the catfish thought that was the best thing ever. <laughs> this lake also has catfish in it. We probably caught uh, 15 of them a, uh, a piece. Yeah. What ended up working really well for us, and this is a technique that uh, PJ's used a lot, uh, I'm not nearly as familiar with it, but is using a weighted bobber, the bobber mm -hmm. he has in his hand there. You can see it's got a lead ring at the bottom. Yeah and then a 132nd ounce bucktail. These are a VMC, this is pink UV fire. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, it was on fire in that dirty yes, water today. Uh, no bait needed, but it was the cadence. Explain the cadence of what you're trying to get that bobber to do. Yeah, so if you were to take a close look at this bobber, the line hooks up on the bottom and on the top. And with this weight and the weight of that jig, each time you twitch, it just tilts like this. So you're getting about an inch, inch and a half vertical jig almost mm -hmm. while you're slowly twitching it. And you know, it, while I'm doing it, I'm not even really going sideways like this. I'm kind of whipping my yep. rod tip and allowing the line to do the twitch. And so once you get that motion down, you're able to kind of perfect that cadence where it's constantly tipping and then going back, tip, go back. And, and as long as you can keep that momentum, that's exactly what these fish want. Uh, so what we ended up doing then is just getting upwind. I had decent wind today. Yeah. We got upwind of the largest boulders we could find on these, uh, these flats. Uh, we used a side imaging to kind of reveal yeah. where the big boulders were, mm -hmm. and then just turned the Mega 360 on to kind of yeah. position ourselves in that perfect location, just upwind so we could toss those bobbers, get right in amongst the boulders, and work them back and it was just it was deadly there it, were times where you'd have a group of fish come through and you'd catch male female male female male female <laughs> yeah. you just you'd pick them off in pairs <laughs> yeah crappies are going to be spawning in minnesota uh you know they've already started around kind of like the twin cities area uh, that spawn activity is going to push further north mm -hmm. and if you find yourself on a, on a vacation with friends or family here in the next couple weeks, make sure you give this a try. You'll probably change colors a little bit. These are really bright colors for stained water. If I went into a scenario with clearer water, I'd probably go to a, like a, a, a black white or mm -hmm. uh, uh, something uh, uh, like a perch pattern, uh, something a little bit more toned down. You don't need bait, perfect that twitch. And I'm, I was a proven a believer today. Yeah. When you get it right, you can have people fishing around you, which we did mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm and just catch fish after fish, yeah. leaving people watching and kind of wondering, what, what are you doing? What's going on there? Yeah, not only that, but the, the technique, outfish live bait. Yeah. Um, it's not too often when panfish are involved that, that, that you, know, you can make that much of a difference by you know, using a different technique. And 
Yeah. This one scored a lot more fish than the minnow and the bobber was it going did. to. We ended up putting those away pretty quickly. Yeah. So this uh, uh, basic pattern right now, uh, I would say within just a couple of days, it's going to be the absolute peak of the spawn here. Uh, things have warmed up so dramatically. Yeah. Uh, when we got on the water this morning, 62 degrees. By the time we left, 70. Mm -hmm. That basically just covered the whole spawning range of temperature in one day. <laughs> yeah, it really did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just three days ago, it was 55 to 57 degrees, so it, it spiked. I mean, this is the warm-up we've been waiting for to kick off a lot of good bites. Well, on Thursday here in two days, it'll be uh, 90 degrees here. So if you catch yourself, you kind of feel like, oh, I missed the bite, just head further north. Mm -hmm. the, this same pattern, the same scenario just walks its way north. Yeah. Two weeks from now, you'll be 200 miles north. Yeah. And you can follow this type of pattern, this type, and use this type of presentation for quite a long period of time. Uh, a week from now, you might show up in this general area and go, ah, oh, the spawn's over for these crappies. Mm -hmm. Not so, just a few hours north. Yeah, yeah, or, or even just transitioning into a deeper, deeper lake lakes. in the area. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, hope you enjoyed the information. This episode, the full complete episode, our final episode for season 16 will air this coming Sunday. Uh, please do check that out. And from uh, me, PJ Vick, all the co-hosts, uh, Marcus Quam, Connor Kleist, everybody behind the camera. P or, uh, we got Jacob Halls holding the camera right there. Uh, Pat McSherry co-hosting, editing, Ben Larson. Uh, he's the art director at In-Depth Outdoors. Does a phenomenal job. We all thank you for watching our on-location videos and also uh, following us throughout the entire season here, season 16. Uh, do know that six months from today, we're gonna be back at it, chasing biggest fish and hottest bites all over the upper, mid upper Midwest. So uh, from all of us here, we appreciate your watching and uh, uh, we look forward to seeing you out there on the ice or on the water next season, 17. In-depth outdoors on location, presented by Reed's Family Outdoor Outfitters. Reed's offers the best service, best price, best advice on all your favorite ice fishing gear, guaranteed. Find them online at reedsports.com.